In this video, we're going to talk about the relationship between E cell and delta G. So you can see I've written their relationship up here in equation form. And you'll notice that at the top of both delta G and E cell, there's this little degree symbol. And what that means is that both of those values are measured under standard conditions. And standard conditions for solutions means one molal concentrations. For gases, it means one bar or one atmosphere of pressure. And they're just standard conditions that chemists have agreed upon. So we know delta G is Gibbs free energy, and of course it's under standard conditions. The N here is the number of electrons transferred. And remember, when we're dealing with E cell, we're talking about electron transfer reactions or redox reactions. So that's why we're worried about the number of electrons transferred. Faraday's constant, F, is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. And the way I understand this is I think about a battery with a wire attached to it in a circuit. Along this wire, electrons are traveling. And I imagine sitting at a certain point on the wire and counting the number of electrons that pass by me in one second. That is the definition of a coulomb. A coulomb is defined as amps times seconds. So it's kind of the number of electrons or charges that pass by you in, a, in one second. What a Faraday's constant does is it scales the concept of a coulomb up to an entire mole of electrons. It says coulombs per mole of electrons. And of course, if we're dealing with just a reaction like this written out, we deal with stoichiometric coefficients in terms of moles. This means one mole of copper, one mole of iron, one mole of iron, two plus. So we want to deal with moles of electrons if we're going to count the number of ones that are transferred in a reaction. E cell, this is the electrochemical potential under standard conditions. And this is measured in voltage or joules per coulomb. And you'll see that all of the units cancel out here to give you an energy for Gibbs free energy. So let's do an example problem. So I want to know what is the delta G naught for copper 2 plus plus iron goes to iron 2 plus plus copper. So clearly this is a redox reaction, right? The copper went from copper 2 plus to neutral copper, so it gained two electrons, it was reduced. The iron went from neutral iron to iron 2 plus, it lost two electrons, so it was oxidized. So if we want E cell under standard conditions, we know we can use the equation E cell equals E cathode minus E anode. And we know that at the cathode, reduction occurs, and at the anode, oxidation occurs. But how do we know which element is the cathode and which is the anode? Well, we have to look at the standard reduction potentials. And you see here that the more positive the standard reduction potential, the more likely it is to want to be reduced. So you can see copper has positive 0.34 volts associated with its reduction, while iron has a negative 0.44 volts associated with its reduction. So that means copper is going to be the one that wants to be reduced here, while iron is going to be the one that wants to be oxidized. So that means copper is going to be at our cathode, so 0.34 at our cathode, and then minus negative 0.44 at our anode, and we get our E cell to be 0.78 volts. So now we have our E cell, we know Faraday's constant isn't going to change, and we know the number of electrons transferred was 2, right? Copper gained 2, and iron lost 2. So this is going to be delta G under standard conditions equals negative 2 times 96,485 times 0.78 volts, and you get your delta G naught here. This is your answer in joules. And I hope it makes sense to you that this negative sign here means that whenever you have a negative delta G or a spontaneous reaction, you're going to have a positive E cell. And whenever you have a positive delta G or a non-spontaneous reaction, you're going to have a negative E cell. So they're sort of the reverse of each other for spontaneous and non-spontaneous reactions. 